Welcome to lecture 9 of CS7015. Uh, today we will talk about uh, greedy layer wise pre training, uh, better activation functions, better weight initialization methods, and batch normalization. Right? So, today's lecture is more like uh, tips and tricks to make deep learning work. Right? So, when you are actually experimenting with deep learning in practice, what are some of the things that you need to uh, take, keep in mind? And it is also uh, my way of connecting the history that we saw to where we are today, right. So, uh, there were certain things which we saw in the history and now I will try to bring those back and connect to where we are headed from here, right, where we have reached today and where we are headed from here, okay. So, that is with that, uh, in module 1 I will do a very quick recap of training neural networks, I will not take more than 5 minutes and I need it for a specific purpose. So, we already saw how to train such a very shallow neural network, what was the uh, learning algorithm? gradient descent and this was the update rule, right. In particular I want you to notice that the gra gradient actually depends on the input, okay. So, when you compute the gradient formula you have this multiplication by x, so it is proportional to the input and this is one fact that we will use at at least a couple of places in the lecture today. So, this was a very shallow single neuron network, what if we have a wider network still which algorithm? Gradient descent, okay and we just have these three different formulae. And for each of these formulae note that the gradient uh, rather this gradient depends on the input that you are feeding in, okay. Everyone keep this in mind. And what if we have a deeper network? So, we saw a very shallow network, we saw a wide network, now I am showing you a deep network. What will you do? Again gradient descent, but you will apply the chain rule for computing the gradients. And again here in general you will notice that for any of these weights w1, w2, w3, the gradient formula will have this h i minus 1. What is h i minus 1? Input from the previous layer, right and h 0 is the actual input. So, the gradient at any layer is actually proportional to the input from the previous layer and this could either be the input from the hidden layer or the actual input, okay. And finally, we saw this thin, uh, so, uh, so we saw a wide network, we saw a thin network. Uh, now, we will see a wide network and a deep network, right. Sorry, we saw earlier we saw a wide network and a deep network, now we will see a wide and deep network. And here again you have compute the gradient by applying this chain rule across multiple paths and that is what we use and we call it back propagation. And remember again there the same thing holds that the gradients at some point are proportional to the input at that layer. Everyone remembers that, okay. So, this is important. So, what we have is things to remember from what we have seen so far is that. So, training neural networks is basically a game of gradients, right. So, you compute the gradients and everything depends on those. How will you update the weights and everything from there on is about the gradients and these gradients actually tell you the responsibility of the parameters to the loss and you appro appropriately update them. And we saw variant, va uh, different uh, sorry various variants of how to use the gradient. So, we saw the gradient descent, we saw nag, momentum and all. But in all of these the underlying core thing was to compute the gradient and then do some manipulations based on that, okay. And the other key thing is that the gradient at a layer, particular layer depends on the input to that layer, okay, fine. So, now let us go back and just uh, retrospect a bit right and see what is it that we have learned so far. So, so far what I have taught you gradient descent or uh, sorry back propagation is something which was proposed way back in 1986, right. So, in fact, it was existent before that, but it was popularized by this work of uh, Rumel, Hart and others in 1986, right. So, but then in the 1990s or early 2000s, if back propagation already existed and we could train deep neural networks, then why did not we hear so much about deep learning at that time? Of course, you guys were busy with school and all at that time, but, but why did the others or older people like me not hear about it, right. Computational power, is that the only thing? Computation and memory, is that the only thing? Who said convergence? Okay, good. So, actually what happened right in the late 80s and early 90s and even early 2000s, when you used back propagation to train really deep networks, it was not very successful. And what do I mean by not successful actually? What are the two things that could happen? Someone gave the answer already. It does not converge. Right, that means you do not reach the optimum solution, right. 
in fact uh, till 2006 it was very hard to train very deep networks okay and typically even a la after a large number of epochs these networks did not converge that means they were still at a very high loss and although in principle everything is fine you have a deep neural network you have an algorithm that can train it but you are still not being able to train it properly and you are not being able to make any practical use of that right. So that was the story till 2006. So today is about what happened in 2006, what it led to in the next few years and then where we are currently right. So that is the journey that we need to make okay and that is why we started off with this quick recap of back propagation because that is what I want to tell you that why did it not work earlier and where are we today.